lot of expectations that it was going to be, first of all, really challenging to be around a bunch of people. <laughs> particularly because I'm used to this pattern of isolating, being individual, being an independent woman, things like that. And I was really surprised to come and just sink into this experience of watching the mind and being supported by a group of mighty companions from all different walks of life, all different ages, all different experiences that are dedicated to this purpose of using the teachings of A Course in Miracles as the focal point of their lives. I was a little bit looking for like a time for um, to be able to really read the Course for a long time every day and pray, but I got the feeling right away that this is more about the Mighty Companions and exploring um, what it's like to share a kitchen with nine people. And that's a new thing. That's really a new thing for me to allow myself to be supported and that's what co-living provides as well. So it's this beautiful space where these patterns, these beliefs can be flushed up and it's allowed to play out. And there was no interference. Nobody came to interrupt me, to tell me I should feel better, the framework of allowance that any thought can be expressed and exposed and, and, and you're allowed to sit with it um, is just something that I've never found anywhere else. I, another service project is being part of the remote volunteers and just transcribing um, some of David's YouTube videos. <laughs> <laughs> Hummingbirds are amazing. It's it's something I've been doing for a year and a half is transcribing the words of David Hoffmeister from videos, um, copying the words from The Course in Miracles. And it's just amazing that this opportunity came up here as I come to Canvas to, to get so intimate with one of the videos and just type the words and um, and, and, and in doing that I listen to it quite a few times so it's really a way to really take it in pretty strongly. So I was witnessing a bit of a, like a plan going on among the co-livers here, among some others here, about how to deal with these weeds. They're tall, they're, they're difficult to get out, they're stubborn, just like the thoughts in the mind. And I found that I wasn't expressing myself. And something just arose in me, I'm like, hmm, this seems like an opportunity for me to actually break through this fear of speaking up and just stating my opinion and being authentic. That's been an issue for me. And so I did that. A group of us went outside and pulled weeds and we joined about the symbols behind the weed pulling. That's when these roots are deep, just like uh, the, the roots of the ego thoughts in the mind, they take a little work, they take a little effort and they can be challenging. And if we pull too hard, we can actually hurt ourselves. <laughs> we can hit ourselves in the face and you know, so it's using these symbols, uh, using the symbol of the weeding to open my mind. There's a choir on Thursday evening. It's really moving for me. It, just to be singing. When we sang the song, one of the songs at church on Sunday, or the service on Sunday, um, I just, I couldn't even sing it. It was so moving to me. So it's just another way of feeling, feeling the emotions that is ha that's happening because I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm in this brand new place and it's so different than my regular world and yeah, our expression sessions help, being in a ki the kitchen together helps, but um, you know, sitting down with a mighty companion and going over something that's troubling helps, but the music has been um, a really fun part of it. And some of us were saying, you know, we just want to sing even more. So we just went out on the lawn one evening and we each brought our phones and so we could all hear some songs that were inspiring for all of us and sang and danced and it was really fun.
this process has sped up exponentially here. And it's really incredible to feel the shifts happening hour by hour rather than day by day, month by month, year by year. There's a noticeable difference in my state of mind on a daily, weekly basis. I've been having a series of coffee miracles. <laughs> Oftentimes I wake up in the morning and I have this wish for coffee. I think, oh, wouldn't it be nice if I had time to brew a, coffee, a cup of coffee before the meeting I need to go to, the Sunday service, etc. And I continually walk into the kitchenette and somebody says, hey, there's coffee for you. Uh, one morning I was offered half and half and I didn't have any. So it's these unspoken prayers and these inform. It seems like it's just a cup of coffee and half and half. But there's evidence of the one mind at work behind these symbols that um, my mind is joined with other minds. And if it's coffee or half and half, or countless other symbols, the evidence is coming through and it's bringing about this very compelling, convincing experience. You know, I'm being convinced through all of these seemingly mundane symbols that um, I am joined with everyone here. I'm joined with everyone. I'm in the choir here on campus and singing is just opening up my heart. I'll